Oui. Bonjour. Ça va? Comment allez-vous? Vous allez bien? Thank you. It gives me immense pleasure to join you in celebrating the efforts of a lifetime. To the students community, I feel as special as you today. As I feel as special as you do today because the Wendios University has weighted my efforts in public service over the last decade and found it worthy of an honorary degree. Kenyalenda Slums in Kisumu City in Kenya. I watched my mother struggle during odd jobs and selling illicit brew called Changa to put food on our table and pay school fees for me and my siblings. I grew up in extreme poverty with its attendant indignities in a very dehumanizing and traumatizing environment. Through sheer hard work, sacrifice and God's favor, I passed my exams with flying colors to join the prestigious University of Nairobi. After getting a first class honors degree in BSc Actual Science, I went back for a master's degree and then for another fresh four, year, four years of a bachelor's degree in law. And then once again for another two years for a master's in law. In my insatiable quench for education, my guiding principle has been, I refuse to accept despair as the final response to the ambiguities of history. I refuse to accept the idea that the isness of man's present condition makes him morally incapable of reaching up for the eternal oughtness that forever confronts him. There has been a moral oughtness burning inside me, a dream telling me that things can change right from my personal circumstances to my community, my country, Africa and the world. I first experimented with this thirst for change at the University of Nairobi where I led my fellow, stu my fellow students as president of the Comrades Union with endless achievements. We stopped arbitrary and whimsical increments in fees for struggling poor students. We improved living conditions in our hostels and joined lecturers in strikes to petition for better working terms from the government. We protested police brutality and violation of human rights and joined Kenyans to push for government reforms to lower the cost, to lower the cost of living. To scale up my efforts, I ran for a parliamentary seat in the city of Nairobi in 2017 and I have had the honor to serve as a member of parliament in Kenya for two terms now courtesy of the trust bestowed upon me by the great people of Embakasi East constituency. I was first elected at 29 years old. My journey has been exciting, but not easy. Our political landscape has profound challenges. The vast number of men and women in the shackles of poverty, young people without prospects for decent life, for decent lives and pandemics like COVID-19 that prove to us that despite some changes we see around in Kenya and here in Benin, to most of our people, the more things have changed, the more things have remained the same. They have been passed by the scarce opportunities. Our people are bitter. They feel defeated and they sense that even the modest desires of their hearts are completely out of reach. It is in response to such a volatile, such an uncertain, such a challenging and ambiguous world that I have guided my mind and heart by adhering to my personal vision, understanding, clarity, agility to respond to the ambiguities of history, not with despair, but with hope and determination. In my second term as a member of parliament, I have inspired the youth of my country by providing to them that, by proving to them that age is no limitation. 
and that instead of lamenting, they can join leadership positions and carry the voices of their people to the halls of decision making. That they can be the change that they seek and yearn for. I have helped poor parents send their children to school by issuing over 100,000 bursaries and scholarships to needy students in the past six years. I have built roads, schools, and provided water to my people. I have supported families in sickness and mourned with them when they bury their loved ones. Similarly, when the coronavirus pandemic struck in 2019 and students were stranded at home for more than one year, I offered online lessons, stroke classes to our learners in primary school, in secondary school, and in university, in sciences and mathematics. These lessons have been viewed by more than 50 million people online. A few days ago, I received a surprise call from this great university to notify me that you have considered my efforts to advance the cause of fellow human beings by an award of an honorary doctorate degree. I'm honored. I feel happy and blessed and it makes me want to do more. I have found my resolve to offer my best in service to mankind strengthened more and more by your generous act of kind recognition. I would not be who I am or where I am without the hand of God upon my life, and so in a special way I would like to give God all the glory and honor. As I conclude, I wish to turn my attention to the students gathered here today. Comrades, power! You say power. Comrades, power. Comrades, Ria. Comrades, Ra. Comrades, Tidim. Comrades, Tialala. Education is a bridge between your dirty past and your golden tomorrow in the foreseeable future. Comrades, as you take your steps out of this university, the world ahead of you is as volatile, uncertain, challenging, ambiguous as it was when I took my own such steps. There are no paths ahead. And after many years in school, it will temporarily look like your dreams may not come true. I know this is the time you ask yourself, and where do I go from here to the graduates? I want to encourage you that it has never been easy for any generation past. To the volatile world, I ask you to respond by developing a personal vision. To the uncertain world, I ask you to, de to develop proper understanding through a committed culture of personal study and continuous self-improvement. To a challenging world, I implore you to develop clarity by reaching out to mentors and devising a personal life blueprint and strategy to guide your efforts. I have heard Prime Minister Raila Odinga as my mentor and I know the benefits. To the ambiguous world, do not respond by despair. I ask you to develop personal agility that can help you sail steadily through the stream of time. Your life will be held back by difficulties. There are moments you will feel like going back home. There are moments when you will feel you face the worst challenges of all times. At those moments, I will call your attention to the words of Winston Churchill that he spoke to the, devastating, to the devastated colonial masters at the peak of the terrible World War II. In the long years to come, not only will the people of this island, but of the world, wherever the bird of freedom chaps in the human heart, look back to what we have done, and they will say, do not despair, do not yield, march straight forward. Comrades, 
As we join the real world at a time of crisis in human conditions here in Benin, West Africa, do not despair, do not yield. Be the masters of your fate, be the captains of your soul, and march straight forward into the dawn of a new day that was prophesied by Father Gilbert John Dagnon. Mercy. Thank you all. Merci beaucoup. God bless Weldios University. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm more congratulations.